take these out so you can see better. Um, of course, this red heat lamp, this poultry lamp we've got in the brooder, just is, doesn't <laughs> let you see what color they are. Um, so I will take them out so that you can really see well in just a minute, but I don't want to take them out too early um, because I want them to stay warm in there. Just so I'm just going to take them out just for the demonstration and then put them back before they get cold. Um, in here we have four cream leg bars and one uh, silky cross. The cream leg bars we had gotten as hatching eggs from a hatchery and the silky cross it just came from our own farm. I'm not sure which hen it was that laid the egg so I'm really not sure <laughs> what that is crossed with. Um, could be of several different things. But uh, we've got um, all of these that we hatched out in our Brinzea incubator. I think that's how you say that. I actually never looked up how to say it. Uh, which is, if you're looking at hatching eggs, I have not been satisfied with any other incubator. And that really says a lot. It has a near 100% hatch rate. So look up Brinzea incubator if you are looking to hatch your own eggs. It's just a wonderful incubator in my opinion. Um, but anyway, that is not what this video is about. That is a different topic for a different day. Um, we have a video specifically on sexing different um, different chicks by um, the, the color or the markings of their down. Today we're going to focus on the cream leg bar and I'm going to give you an example as to this silky cross versus the cream leg bar, why you can't do the same thing with other breeds or other cross breeds that you can with these cream leg bars. Um, and there's a lot of videos out there that will show you uh, a good, distinct, no doubt about it, male versus female cream leg bar. I would highly um, advise you guys to look at those videos um, this video is mainly just, okay, wh when, when does it start to be, it could be one or the other, I'm not sure, how do I really tell, is this really a female or is this a male, because sometimes chicks that are in between what a female and a male should be, um, <laughs> when you're looking at color, when you're looking at markings, you want to make uh, sure that you are looking for that particular breed because some breeds they go by more color than markings and other breeds go by more markings than color and then some breeds you have to go by both and these are down most breeds you're gonna have to wait until they get older to sex them which um, uh, wing sexing is a myth in my opinion whether this is truly a female or truly a male um, so that is what we're going to be focused on today, the ones that are not so obvious, um, or less obvious. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a good male to, to show you because these chicks, they came in the mail, they got delayed, it was the middle of the winter. And so that's why I think we had all female hatch out, um, simply because the eggs got too cold. But I'm going to show you a wonderful example of a female that may be mistaken for a male. Very dark coloring, what we call chipmunk markings. There's this big wide stripe down the middle. There's some little, if you can see that, lighter stripes on each side. And then see that um, there is a little white dot here, but you know, um, males, they get two copies of that gene. Um, females get one copy, so sometimes that little white dot can appear on the females. That is still considered a very obvious female. That dot is much, much bigger and more defined on the males, and it, here you can barely even see it at all. Now here we've got another very obvious female. This one has a thinner stripe in the middle and wider stripes on the outside. That does not matter. You're still just looking for that chipmunk marking, which she has. This one is just a different color, um, but it's still got, you see that nice stripe down the middle 
and if we lift up the wing here, you can see that that's a very nice on both sides, bold, very bold um, chipmunk marking. Now, if you were to look at this by color, you might say, oh, well, that one is the male, but no, um, the, it's the stripe that we have here that is most important. Males will have no stripe or a very, very dull stripe. And so this actually, in my opinion, um, you know, if this is not a female, I'd be very, very surprised. Now look at the shoulders. Even this dark colored chick has graying on the shoulders. That sort of, it, that's normal for, for the hens to have these splotchy gray around the shoulders. That does not mean that just because the shoulders are, uh, you put them back in here so they don't get too cold. That doesn't mean that the shoulders are, you know, um, that washy, blurred uh, male markings on this particular breed. They, they, just, they just have that sort of blur around the shoulders. So let's take this silky cross um, as an example. Even if it was crossed with a leg bar, does that white dot mean that it's a male? No, because it's a cross and anything that is not a purebred leg bar, you have zero chance of knowing what sex it is. So this guy, we have no idea. We probably won't know for at least six or eight weeks. Maybe not a totally blur stripe, but not as distinct as this. That would be like on the fence, right? Because, okay, it has a stripe, but it's, but it's not totally solid and it's not totally blurred. If that was the case and you had a chick like that, which I don't have a chick like that to show you, um, the best I have are, you know, these two separate colors. Um, and so, yeah, no, I really don't have a chick that's totally on the fence to show you. But if you did have one like that, best to wait because the worst thing you could possibly do is accidentally mistake female for male, especially for farmers who are primarily um, having their chickens for eggs and not meat. Video, and hopefully that helps you determine at least for the cream leg bar um, a little bit about those chickens that may be in between.